All right, are we good in the back? Ready to go for audio? All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you making the time uh, to spend a few minutes with me. If you are looking for happy hour, you are in the wrong session. All right, great. I am Steve Helvey, and I am part of the team at the Open Compute Project Foundation, or OCP. And um, when I come to these events, there's usually two things that happen. One is I'm very excited about the type of information that's going to be coming. And then after I sit through some of this information, I'm either excited about where I am, or I'm very nervous that I'm missing something, and that I'm not exactly where I want to be. So my goal is, a little bit of both today, is to share with you what some of the companies are doing around open source hardware. So we've been spending all day today, and we'll spend all day tomorrow, and the next day, good morning guys, uh, talking about open source software, and this is a bit about open source hardware. So how many people have been in the data center? Christoph, John, not, uh, wow, that's great, wonderful. <clears throat> um, in a typical traditional data center, an enterprise data center or colo, the data center to technician ratio in general is between say two to 3,000 servers per technician. And then on a hyperscale, the large cloud players, anyone care to guess what that data center to technician ratio is? or server to technician. Yeah? It's 30,000 or more. <clears throat> I've heard Meta's running up to 40,000 nodes per technician, but to be conservative, I've heard between, say, 20 and 30. So how do they do it? There are three things that Meta and Facebook do extremely well. They do their software very well. They run all open source software. Number two is they run open source hardware which is what we're going to be talking about today. And the third is they spend a lot of time optimizing their data center and their data center design. The data center design itself, I won't spend too much time on, but you can find a lot of information on the web around how they've optimized the design within their data center. So before I get started again, there are two things and two terms I want to set clear. One is OEM and the other one is ODM or white box. So an OEM, is a company that takes products from a manufacturer, bundles them, puts them under their own brand name, and then sells them to the widest possible market. And these are the big name server brands that you see in the market today. The other segment of the market is called an ODM or a white box. And these are the manufacturers. These are the companies that make the servers for the OEMs. So they'll do full product lifecycle, management design, and a lot of their services are really around product support only. So you have the OEM that does more of the managed service approach and the ODMs that are more product centric on the support. So keep those two terms in mind as we move forward. What is open compute? It is white box ODM commodity hardware plus open source. That is the genesis of the OCP. Right now, we're running a little over 250 companies, 8,000 engineers working across multiple areas of the data center. The data center could be a compute, could be storage, networking devices, advanced cooling, immersion cooling, 8,000 hardware engineers across 30 plus projects really solving common problems. And these are some of the larger, uh, pause. Okay, all right, thank you. Walking too far away. So these are really some of the more uh, amazing hardware engineers in the industry this, today. Vendors working with consultants, hardware um, uh, architects, even cloud players, all working together on these common problems. Resulting in over 200 contributions. Now a contribution could be a specification, could be written specification, it could be a product, itself that's based off of that specification, and it could be design guidelines, as an example. One thing that separates open compute from other foundations is that we do not take a paper specification into the foundation unless there is a product ready to go to market within around 120 days. So that keeps people from really being a library or a knowledge base of unused specifications. This makes sure that whatever comes through the foundation there's product on the backside of it. 
And that's what keeps the pipeline moving. This, of course, is just a snapshot, a partial list of our members. Now, there are a few companies here that you may recognize and some other companies you may not. Inspur as an example. If you've never heard of Inspur, they are the third largest server maker in the world. We win down here, the very last one, one of the two or three key suppliers for the hyperscalers when it comes to compute and storage. So these people are becoming more and more comfortable buying from white box or ODMs. And why is that? Well, it's a lot of it has to do with the software. Things are becoming more cloud enabled. It's easier to manage on the software so you can commoditize the hardware layer and you do not need to worry so much about it. The best operating model with an open compute is that I have one spec, then I can go get multiple suppliers making me something very similar. So instead of having half of my estate in one OEM, half of it in another OEM, I can have one spec, and then I can have multiple suppliers making me something very, very similar. That's what the big hyperscale cloud players do, and that's what makes them extremely efficient, a homogeneous environment. There are four tenets that embody everything that we do at Open Compute. Impact, efficiency, scale, and openness. Every project measures a contribution based on these four areas. Now, of course, the measurement may vary based on the particular project, but everything that comes through the project is based on these four areas. Let me give you a couple of quick examples. This right here is a server bezel. It's the piece of plastic that goes across the front of a server. This is what we call gratuitous differentiation. There are literally hundreds of variations of this. So some people say, well, what value does it have other than the brand name across the front of the server? Here is an open compute server. We have this passion at OCP for simplicity, to get rid of everything that we do not need. Get rid of it. This server here has around 3 kg less embodied energy than a normal server. That's a big deal here in Europe and worldwide when it comes to measuring your scope of missions. It also weighs less, a great deal less when you're moving it around the data center. And I'll call out these green touch points. This is a toolless design. So you can typically replace any part on that server and component within about three to four minutes without using a tool. That is another reason why you have one technician covering 20 to 30,000 nodes. Very simplistic designs. I'll give you one more example of efficiency. In a typical server, across the back, you have eight 40 millimeter fans in a traditional OEM style server. In these cubby servers or an OCP, the OU is higher. It's two 80 millimeter fans. And it's something called the fan cube law, where I can decrease the speed of my fan by half. In order to do that, though, I can decrease the amount of energy it takes to spin that fan by around 7 eighths. And that's another big deal. You can run the servers hotter, better airflow, and you do not need to be spending as much energy. How does this translate? This is SK's um, test that they did in a typical colo environment. So they didn't do it in the best optimal data center environment. The bottom lines are OCP. So inlet temperatures across the bottom and the power consumption on the y-axis. And you can see a workload at zero. It's running around 50% more efficient and even at 100% we're seeing between 19 to 20%. That is typically the ratio that we're seeing between 10 to 30 to 50% more efficient depending on your environment. This is probably the best 14 or 15 minutes on the web around what goes into a Facebook rack. So I put the link here. You can download, the, uh, you can download it later, take a picture of it, or you can just type into Google or YouTube what's inside a Facebook data center rack. A great example, they go through how the servers are configured. They go through the power in the back. You never have to go around to the back of an OCP rack. There's one giant bus bar in the back. It clips in all the cables on an OCP rack or front facing. So you don't have to go around and work in that hot aisle. Again, another efficiency metric within OCP. This is our hardware and software co-design strategy. So where does OCP play? 
and where do we not, where do we stop within the projects. We rely a lot on alliances, on the orchestration for the operating system, et cetera, then partnerships on the hardware abstraction and device drivers. And the core area within OCP is around management, security, firmware, and of course the device itself. So some examples of what I mentioned around specifications translating into products. In the upper left-hand uh, corner, you have edge servers. The edge server itself was initially written by Nokia, one of the more conservative companies out there that joined probably four or five years ago. The first year, they did absolutely nothing within OCP. Absolutely nothing. They sat and listened. Second year, they contributed one spec, and it was a tiny little seismic kit, a little bar that goes across the back. That's all they did. Third year, they started to think more and more. Now they are not only leading the Edge project and the Telco project, but they've made multiple server contributions. This is a company that is extremely conservative that now sees the, the value in open source. If you see Nokia's 5G announcements for anything Open Edge related, it's all open source underneath that. All open source hardware. Their software on top, all open source hardware underneath it. On the right-hand side is the uh, Facebook server. Anybody from Sardina Systems in here? Okay, Sardina Systems is, um, took advantage of the ability to certify and validate their software, their enterprise OpenStack so um, software on OCP, and that is being delivered here in Europe through one of our partners called VesperTech out of the UK. So this company out of the UK is running open source hardware, running open source software on top. And they've branded themselves. If any of you are here from a company or a reseller, they're moving away from, they used to sell just traditional OEM boxes, but instead of being one of 30 OEM vendor, vendors in the country, they've now rebranded themselves as kind of the open hardware vendor. And that gives them the unique value proposition in the market where they're positioning themselves as white box, ODM, open source, and open source software. And of course, all the networking switches um, probably our biggest estate of devices are on the networking side, all open sourced through OCP. If you want to know more about open compute, this was just a quick high level overview. The two better sessions, Wednesday and Thursday, right, John? Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday and Thursday. Person on the uh, left, John Leung, one of the smarter, longer term guys for OCP and we'll be speaking in depth around the management piece. And this, um, based on some of the feedback that I've had from people using traditional hardware, moving over to OCP, this is the biggest area. And the biggest obstacle is the management. How do I manage this new type of hardware? So I highly encourage you to catch John's session and then Christoph Stripe from ScaleUp Technology. ScaleUp has over five data centers here in Germany running OCP hardware, and he will talk in detail about some of the things that he's seen, some of the benefits, some of the hassles, some of the good, some of the bad. So again, OpenStack with OCP Wednesday and Thursday. Here is my contact information. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. You can visit the OCP Marketplace. You can become a member. Uh, it does not cost anything to participate in the projects, to listen in on the project. Only if you want to start making one of those contributions, if you want to start writing those specifications, or if you want to start branding your company, then there's a membership requirement associated with that. But just to participate, download anything, any of the material we have is wide open within OCP. And of course, we have tons of information on the YouTube as well. Uh, and all of our summits are broadcast and recorded. Join a project, collaborate, and contribute. And final thoughts, open software deserves open hardware. It doesn't make sense if you're already doing the open source software and you're seeing all the benefits for your customer. If you can just add that open source software or open source hardware underneath, you can additionally get those, those benefits and those operational efficiency at the scale. And it doesn't have to be a brand new data center. So we have co-location facilities just running one or two racks that are getting the same type of benefits. Maybe not to quite the scale, and a lot of it does depend on the capex, 
Maybe I can't buy certain components as cheap as some of the hyperscalers can, but I can still get those operational efficiency metrics at scale if I'm using even a smaller deployment, say one, two, three, five racks a quarter, five racks a year, et cetera. So that is it, and I'm under my 20 minutes. I'm gonna open it up for questions if you guys have anything. Yeah. Yeah, there are uh, two areas around the rack piece. One is the, what the hyperscaler is using now, Meta. That rack is slightly different. It is the exact same footprint as a traditional 19-inch rack. What Facebook has done on the inside is they've turned the rails, and it gives them 21 inches on the inside. Again, same footprint. They've turned the rails on the inside. That allows you to fit three of those servers across, when you're doing hard drives, it allows for an extra hard drive, gives you 25% more density. There's a power bus bar in the back, usually with one or two power zones, and you can just clip in, push in, hot plug the, the appliances in and out. Again, I mentioned all the cabling is on the front, so they don't go around to the back of an OCP rack. The second type of rack is a traditional 19 inch. So just the fact that I showed you that one server, we do have regular what they call pizza box servers that have been open source. They've met those requirements. They've written the specification. They meet efficiency standards that we set. And those are just traditional 19 inch form factors that will can then go in a traditional rack. Same power. So it doesn't necessarily mean the server that I just opened up here. We also have shorter form factors that have come, that edge server that I mentioned. Those things can fit in utility poles um, uh, some ruggedized boxes that go in, say, airports or along railways. And then we also have immersion tanks that have been validated as well. So people are starting to do more advanced cooling, rear door heat exchange, um, immersion. And the biggest thing that we see now, aside from the gear that's inside the rack, so taking that out of consideration, the fastest growing project with an open compute is around advanced cooling. As the racks get hotter and denser, so I think you can go up to around 15 kW before you start running out of some air, air ability. How am I gonna cool it? What am I gonna do with the heat? Some countries will not let you put a data center up unless you have a heat reuse plan. Singapore has relaxed their moratorium on it, but they're trying to figure out a tropical data center environment. But what to do with the heat? So in the past 10 years, one of my colleagues says it's says it's said it best. Fif 10 years ago, it was, Am I gonna use renewables? Everybody's using renewables now in their data center. Everybody's green. The next 10 years is what am I gonna do with that heat? So we have people growing, of course, agriculture. We have a lot of, it here in Europe, you're lucky because you can plug into district heating systems. But in America and Asia, what am I gonna do with this heat? And how am I gonna handle it? So immersion, advanced, and heat reuse is the big thing that we're working on now. And it all impacts the software layer. Thanks for the question. Anything else? What would be random to fight about a open all the way application, meaning that if I have two members that propose the same paper or, or the same, let's say, same system, whatever, do you accept both or do you have a vote between the members to accept one paper more than another? What would be random? Great. So the question was if, if we have two members that basically want to contribute something very similar, yeah. how do we choose which one? Well, traditionally, we, the way things materialize with an open compute is somebody will propose that they want to work on a common problem, say, hey, I have this edge server idea. Most of the time, we get collaboration. So they can actually write a, a joint development agreement where these companies can work within the governance of OCP, but together, and then release everything out to the open community. If the documents are exactly the same, we'll encourage them to work together. If there are slight variations, we will take both specs. But we will encourage, most of the time, to just align with that spec. We've had a few people start to say, well, um, I, my server is slightly different. I say, well, can you just align to this? Because this drives, um, especially on the rack side. We used, back a few years ago, we started to get a little bit um, out of line here with the number of rack type of configurations that we wanted. So we started to align to just one or two 
or three different types of rack configurations. John, did I miss anything on that? Is that the way you would say that? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was probably our largest contribution um, as far as the number of companies working on one thing, which is 16. And Intel drove and led that primarily. Yep. Anything else? All right, well, I hope you got something out of this. Be thinking about open source hardware when you're doing your open source software. And attend John's session and Christoph's session if you really want to know how the stuff works. All right, anything else? Thank you so much for the time.